Hey there, let's take a look at climate change eff effects and inputs and outputs. Climate change causes changes in weather patterns. This can result in changes in precipitation and evaporation, which can have significant impact on a region's hydrological cycle and ecosystems. Trends in precipitation. Climate change leads to changes that include increased precipitation in some regions, which results in flooding or change in ecosystems. The likelihood of tropical storms increases as sea levels rise and sea surface temperature increases. The high levels of rainfall mean that tropical regions near coastlines are at risk of higher precipitation rates and flood risk. Climate change can also reduce precipitation in regions that are used to having high rainfall. Trends in evaporation. Areas that see an increase in temperature from climate change can lead to evaporation happening with greater ease. In contrast, areas that see a decrease in temperature may see a reduction in evaporation. If temperatures decrease to below freezing, water may remain frozen and so be stored as ice. Climate change causes changes in weather patterns. This can result in changes in precipitation and evaporation, which can cause significant impacts on the region's hydrological cycle and ecosystems. Water changes in evaporation trends. Areas that see an increase in temperature may see evaporation happening with greater ease. Areas that see a decrease in temperature may see reduction in evaporation. And if temperatures reduce to below, decrease to below freezing, water may remain frozen as ice. Let's have a look now at climate change effects, how climate change affects stores and flows. Climate change affects global water stores capacity and their ability to recharge because of changes in temperature and precipitation rates. Reservoirs and lakes. Lakes and reservoirs are not being recharged as they previously were because of decreases in rainfall and high temperatures in some areas. Lake chat and is on our sea are drying up, devastating impacts on the ecosystem and local residents. The four bordering nations, Chad, Cameroon, Niger and Nigeria, all rely on the lake as a water source. Lake Chad was once the third largest source of fresh water in Africa, but is now 1 20th the size it was 40 years ago. Snow and glaciers. Climate change has led to an increase in global average global temperatures, leading to a reduction in ice forming seasons. Early 2018 saw the smallest amount of winter Arctic ice since the 1960s. Sea ice is not forming to the same extent, and current sea ice is breaking off into, large, into icebergs. Permafrost. We call the frozen ground near the poles in high latitude regions permafrost, for example Siberia. Permafrost can hold water in the form of ice. In summer, if the soil temperatures increase above freezing, permafrost can thaw and the ice within can melt. Thawing leads to percolation and through flow to left the ecosystem. Climate change often leads to a rise in temperature in permafrost regions, so as soil temperatures increase, so will the amount of permafrost loss. Soils. Different soils and different climates will be affected by global warming differently, depending on the weather extremes. Climate change offers uncertain future as a result of this. Generally, soil moisture levels will decrease as less water will infiltrate the soil in droughts and in periods of intense rainfall because of the high runoff rates. So let's quickly recap that. These are the potential, some of the potential impacts of climate change on doors and flows. Lake Chad drying up, sea ice not forming to the same extent, and permafrost loss. Climate change can mean a decrease in rainfall and high temperatures in some areas. Lake Chad and the Uzbekistan Aral Sea are drying up with a devastating impact on the ecosystem and local residents. The four bordering nations, Chad, Cameroon, Niger and Nigeria, all rely on the lake as a water source. What do we call the frozen ground near the poles? We call this permafrost. <laughs>